Hey everyone, welcome to the Convo Couch. I'm Sun. I'm Jessie. And today we've got musician and vocalist Alice from Ballads. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a good question. <laughs> yeah, so what do you think it is about Australia that limits the music or just the arts industry in general then? Uh, it's, the, it's the cultural thing, I think. Yeah. I think if Australians cared more about art and music in the sense they care about sport. Mm -hmm. It would be a very different world. It would be like Europe. Europe, you go to Europe, they love art. Mm -hmm. And they love yeah. music and weird music, not just pub rock yes, or so Flavor of the Month or Aussie hip hop, which are, which are all valid and awesome mm -hmm. genres. And sports is an awesome thing that gets the community together. Yeah. I'm not a sports watcher myself, Yeah, obviously. No, no. I but <laughs> I, understand, I understand the appeal. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, um, yeah, I think all of our passions have just gone to that sign and mm, mm. when you tell people you're an artist they kind of be like oh really so yeah yeah you're on the doll yeah yeah <laughs> and like, yes but i also create all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is no money yeah that's so and it's true. just really that's hard so to true. and when you're making music i don't know if that's how you felt but actually creating music if you want to get past that sort of DIY punk scene kind of vibe. It's very expensive yeah. to record, yeah. to get a PR company, to play shows with a venue and, mm -hmm. the, and all, the, all the right things. You've got to pay a lot of people to mm -hmm. get things done. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of money. Yeah. And musicians are poor. By gen general sort of rule of thumb, quite poor. Yeah. Already. And the and instruments cost a billion oh, dollars. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I was talking to a drummer friend of mine and he had, he had, to, he had to buy this little screw nut thing and i'm like oh yeah that thing, whatever. and he's like oh it's like you know, 300 dollars yeah like, <laughs> excuse me yeah so it's just you know and and with electronic music um you know i'm using this software called ableton and that costs mm -hmm. two thousand dollars yeah yeah so that's that's not sh sh you know short change mm -hmm. it's um and then and then on top of that you have to have a laptop that's yeah. kind of good mm -hmm. so that's about another two grand yeah and, yeah and then you got to get a mic that's kind of good and that's another 300 you just yeah. yeah so even if you're trying to do like a home studio sort of lo-fi thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah the expenses that go in it is definitely and then all the mental <laughs> anguish that comes with it yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, i made a terrible mistake yeah, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> what am i doing with my life mm -hmm. yeah all my music is shit yeah yelling into the abyss yeah definitely definitely uh, i think that's just yeah. part of being an artist is yeah yeah like, definitely either you love yourself sick and then you, you sort of turn and you go oh my god this is shit oh my god mm -hmm. and you just run into the woods and scream into a well <laughs> i don't I mean that's just me yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no it happens it happens a lot so like i i do um i talk a lot about like um mental health in the music industry as yes. well and, and it's also it's because it's like it's just not talked about very not much and good. but also like for you to stay in the music industry you must really really love it as well gotta do it for the love yeah there's no money yeah exactly but there's yeah. like there's so much pressure like from the outside and like pressure on yourself as well pressure from other people as yeah. well so then like but then where like when do people start talking about like these yeah. issues really i work at apra mm -hmm. and, Cos, and we've done some panels about that like yeah why is there such a high correlation between mental illness mm -hmm. and musicians yeah and it's always like almost chicken and the egg question yeah. like which one came first yeah you know? yeah definitely and yeah and a little by little i think people talking more about it and i think i one of my most sort of passionate causes i'd like to be a voice for is advocating mental health because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um beginning of the um this year i had a fucking meltdown mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. as you do when you're making music yeah, and you're trying to make definitely. shit happen yeah and so it's it's also so been, common as well so common yeah but yeah. you don't know it and you feel very isolated mm -hmm. because people feel uncomfortable talking about it and yeah. rightly so i get it mm -hmm. But when you see people in any public guy talking about it, you go, oh, yeah, shit, that person's got it. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. And, like, when Definitely. I first got diagnosed with bipolar 2, I was like, fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't like this. What does this mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and labels are a funny thing because mm -hmm. it, it kind of gives a name to the monster that you were battling. Yeah. Yeah. But at the Definitely. same time, 
you can't help but to go to the worst of what that means mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you go shit am I, am I supposed to be able to do any of the things I like doing is, yeah. is my life been a lot yeah yeah <laughs> you know it gets definitely. very dramatic and yeah yeah and then I just remember all these all these artists um coming forth in interviews and just sort of very openly talking about their bipolar mm-hmm. and I'm like they're doing well. They're fine. Like, yeah, yeah, she yeah. is bipolar. Yeah, and she is doing yeah, fine. Is. <laughs> more so, than just fine. More than fine. She's really yeah. kicking ass. Yeah. So, and mm-hmm. it's not without battles, of course. But mm-hmm. it's it's nice to see. It, visibility is everything. Yeah. And yeah, same thing with definitely. being Asian and being female as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And it's like, where was that person I needed when I was younger? Yeah. And always, so I'm true. always trying to be like, be that person that you needed when yeah. you were younger. And mm-hmm. I think that's really important because mm-hmm. growing up as a fat, lonely goth kid in a surfy high school mm-hmm. was not fun. I was not represented. Yeah. There was yeah. no visibility of people yeah. like me. I can imagine. Yeah, so it was very unempowering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So maybe there's another fat, lonely Asian goth kid out there one day who comes across this YouTube channel and is like, I can do yeah, yeah that's what you want to like you're you saying want to, like empower, empower someone. but like one yeah. thing at a time you yeah know? exactly and then you know sometimes you do feel like you're a drop in the ocean but you know mm-hmm. the ocean's made of a million drops right? yeah, yeah yeah definitely definitely we got dark real quick, didn't we? <laughs> no, that's kind of what I expected. Oh, 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 oh. I tend to do that. It's like hi, pleasantries, and then now so how long have you been a musician for? That's a weird question. I mean, and, and it'll yeah. come the same to you. It's like, <laughs> and you, every How musician you? will say it. Mm. And they knew it since they were a kid. Mm. And then your parents are like, oh, no, it's a That's baby. Cute. <laughs> yeah. Please grow out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I definitely knew I wanted to do it for sure in two stages when I was 10 and I listened to The Little Mermaid for the first time and I'm like I want to sing right now <laughs> she, she was my inspiration I just sound like a now I sound like a Disney character that's gone through a rough time and, and it's chain smoking so it's kind of like that just dismal not Disney yeah. um, and then when I was 15 and I discovered you know bands like Smashing Pumpkins who mm-hmm. I was obsessed with in yeah. high school yeah. mm-hmm. and then I picked up a guitar and and, and, and then yeah then okay. and then it just never stopped mm-hmm. yeah was there like a turning point for you though where you suddenly went oh my gosh yes like I, I can do this <laughs> yeah the turning point was recent actually yeah um because as I, I can play the guitar but not well <laughs> and I never clicked with the instrument mm, uh, and yeah. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a vocalist at heart through and through mm-hmm. and I didn't know how to write songs because that's what I was really wanting to do mm-hmm. and I'm like yeah. how do I write a song without an instrument yeah and and then okay. um my boyfriend bought me a vocal loop machine <gasps> for my birthday because he, he said you should just sing the part of the instrument and mm-hmm. loop it and yeah. you make the background music yeah. With your, just your voice, mm-hmm. and then I, I swear to God, it'll come, and it fucking did. Yeah. <laughs> that was a like supernova lightning explosion right. moment. That was the moment where, and then the songs came. Right, it was, I see. It was, I it was, see. It's that magical moment you see in Hollywood movies. It was the proverbial light bulb smashing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Um, for me, the turning point. Oh gosh. Um. I'm gonna take a long time. No, go, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> the turning point in like knowing that I wanted to do music for the rest of my life was um, um. So I do I do a lot of music teaching in like regional um, like regional New South Wales. And so this was um this was when I was in first year of uni. So I was a fresh eighteen year old. <laughs> um and like um I didn't I didn't really know what I was doing with teaching. I was just like winging it. <laughs> so I didn't really know how. Most I people in live like. wing it don't. Teach. don't <laughs> yeah, exactly. <so> <laughs> but then like it was more just um it was just like uh, watching the kids on stage and like uh, and also uh, for me the after the after effect made a big difference as well when they were like wow, I had never kind of loved music so much and I'm going to like join this band and I'm going to like find a teacher and like take regular lessons. Now I was like, oh my gosh, like you can make a difference in the music world. You inspired these kids. <laughs> yeah, and I was you like, whoa, this is exactly what I want to do. Like inspire more people now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 So 
just from that, I guess. <laughs> so that was your lightning bulb moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you I write your it. own like original stuff? Not so much. I um, I used to, and like um, I got a lot of compliments for them, but I was I I just I felt really uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is very exposing. Yeah, yeah. It you can is, do a cover is. song till the cows come home. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But if it's your own yeah. shit, it, it just yeah, it's very raw. Yeah, yeah. I feel very That's exposed. Very, very true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't I don't really know why. I just. I don't feel very comfortable. <laughs> like performing as well? Yeah, yeah, even performing. Like, I just I, I just feel like, for me as a person, I just, I like letting other people do things. I, I like being the facilitator. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and for me, like, I get a lot of joy and, like, I feel really proud doing that as well, mm-hmm. just to be, like, the second person behind it. Yeah, but, yeah. like, I don't mind being, like, at the back. The, ma- <laughs> the maestro behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> And like, I wanted to ask, do you go through like a process when you're writing? Like, a, mm. is there something that particularly inspires you? And then so you kind of just jot down your ideas or what's your process? Yeah, sometimes you, you, you get a, like a vocal run in your head and you and I just, you, and the worst is when it happens in public. So you have to go oh, to yeah. a quiet place and you go like, to your phone. <laughs> and then take it back home so you can re-listen to it and make a riff out of it or whatever. Mm, mm, like a hook yeah. out of it. Yeah. Um, other times I have a, I have I wrote lyrics before I could write songs so I've got like stacks of lyrics that I've written oh, awesome. so I always go back to that yeah but um yeah it's 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 there's no real set way of doing mm-hmm. it yeah. mm-hmm. so would you say most of the time you just you have the um the, like the melody in your head and then you just like sing it yeah through? yeah it, awesome. yeah it, it awesome. usually comes to me with all the bits together so oh, that's nice awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and always and, sing it you should always sing about if you can, not always. Who am I to say you should always? Mm-hmm. But you know, I think it helps. Um, definitely, um, it's a it's a forcible vector in mm-hmm. in making a song finished. If it's something that you if it's something that you is important in your life, something yeah, that definitely. has really it's like on the surface for you like mm-hmm. emotionally. So yeah, definitely. If you sing about you know being cool and hang out with your mates mm-hmm. I don't know it's not going to be as powerful as the song you wrote because you, you just broke up with your ex yeah yeah because it's definitely. just you know that I mean that they're very crude examples yeah but... yeah no I know what you mean because people like relate to music yeah, <laughs> on an emotional yeah. level yeah. as well yeah yeah definitely I mean, and I think and, and I hope to I hope I've been for my personal sake as well in selfish reasons mm-hmm. that emotional music is coming back and there's <clears throat> Nothing yeah. wrong with being emotional because mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. always seen as a sign yeah. of weakness, you know. Yeah, especially yeah, not definitely. like like yeah. When women are emotional, they're considered um, <sighs> dramatic, yeah. and, and, and soppy. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and men are just told not to have that yeah. at all. Yeah, definitely. So I just I just want to. I'd like I'd like music to be a way to let the audience see that. Being soft is actually a weapon and it's a gift mm-hmm. and, and, and having emotions and exploring that is actually super powerful and empowering and yes. it's something that makes you stronger mm-hmm. and is not, that is your strength, not your weakness at yeah. all. Like we didn't get to this stage where we've got this amazing technological equipment by being people who aren't inquisitive and curious and empathetic yeah, yeah. you know or else we'd still be bashing each other's heads with a rock and then you know hunting for game mm-hmm. like seriously yeah we'd definitely. still be in the under four days yeah definitely but that's just me i mean i don't know mm-hmm. people might disagree mm-hmm. and for me i don't know i feel like at the end of the day music is a form of communication though mm. like you're trying to convey a message and there's only so much you can convey if you're just talking about I don't know if you're just having a good time. At the yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you're just describing a scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, th- there's always a time and place for that. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, I'm really hoping that you know, sad core music is coming back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want them sad bangers to come back. Yeah, I want them to come yeah. back so bad. Definitely. Like in the '80s and '90s, it was all sad. Yeah, it was great. Do you prefer sad music to happy music? I relate to it more. Yeah, and happiness seems very fleeting, whereas misery is forever. You know, mm. <laughs> oh, deep. <laughs> but also the thing is, um, like, like when when people are feeling sad, like listening to sad music, it kind of, it it, it has like a 
it has a it has a like a benefiting kind of effect though. Like it, it kind of either it makes them get their emotion out so they can feel a little bit better, or they kind of listen to the sad music and go, oh well, I'm not the only one who's feeling like it. Like I can really relate to it. And well, at the end of the day, it still makes them feel better. <laughs> so I don't mm. know. I find there's a there's just a lot of like emotional benefits to like sad music in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think misery is a endless pit. So I'm just gonna lean into it until it doesn't give back anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Good plan then. <laughs> it's what it's what yeah. I know best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna ask I, so, sorry. No, you, no, no, yeah, no, you go. You I have a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, later. I feel like you're doing so well. You're doing way better than I do by myself. <laughs> no, no. Like, <laughs> no, no, we need no, to don't say that okay. yeah. But no, that's great. I just have a question though as well. You know how you said like um, um, certain songs you you try to write about deeper things than just hanging out with friends. So like, what would be the themes of your songs? Do you really want me to say? It? Yeah, yeah. It's really dark. Let's let's that, do the dark stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, my dad died when I was fifteen. Mm. So I there's a lot of I've got a lot of uh, hang ups about my dad because he was mm. also very abusive. Okay. So there's a lot of that shit. Mm. Um, growing up, different. Yeah. I mean, I would have been different if I was a blonde haired, blue eyed kid anyway. Yeah, yeah. But the, because I looked like that, it just yeah. didn't help. Yeah, you know? yeah. I see. I see. Um, a lot, of, lot to do with uh, my mental illness because I've also got complex PTSD as well mm, as bipolar type mm, two. Fun, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. The more you have, the harder it is to treat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So I sing a lot about my experiences with that. Mm-hmm. But then with the songs, I try not to be, and this is, oh, I don't want to offend anybody, but I, like, I really think it's kind of takes the magic out of it when you go to see a show and the person goes, so this song's about, and then lays it out to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was walking down the street and then I went into this shop and then, this, you know, and then like, yeah. and you're like, oh. So I try to... I, not go into too much detail about mm-hmm. what each song's meant because yes. I'd rather the person who's listening to it they'll get it either way yeah. that it's a sad song yeah, or, or yeah. this is about something that yeah. happened that was terrible Yeah, but it, I wanted them to be able to put themselves in that picture yeah. so that they can actually make it theirs because it's like it, this is for everybody it's yeah. not just for them yeah, definitely, so that's definitely. kind of the idea but yeah it's usually that <laughs> um, my incredibly um a uh, tattered childhood <laughs> mm. and um and then also just th- things i've read in novels and you know or or you know circumstances that's happening in the political world without it yeah. being like bashing you over the head with politics kind of Mm-mm. without without going into like too much detail with the politics like what kind of political issues are you kind of into at the moment then? well i think the <clears throat> biggest one is to be as intersectional as I can as a mm-hmm. feminist mm-hmm. and see it from all sides of 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 feminism where it's not just white feminism yeah. um, it should include you know non-binary people it should mm-hmm. include trans people it should include women of color yeah. and and thankfully these were these, these things weren't discussed when I was growing mm-hmm. up and yeah. thankfully it is now yeah. so you know, and, and people, when you say that, they just go, Ooh. I mean, they go like that when you say feminist, but mm-hmm. it's like, we're just trying to make the world a better place for everyone, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. the patriarchy fucks over men as much as it does for women. Yeah. Like, Definitely. there's a reason why male suicide is a double of, men, mm-hmm. of women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's because of this toxic masculinity that says, oh, you're not allowed to have feelings. And yeah. You, be, a, be a man, suck it up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's so true. And it's like, no, don't, don't do that. Be sad. Yeah. Honor you're your allowed feelings. to be sad. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to your mate about it. It's yeah. fucking okay to. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. that's, that's sort of, yeah, that's, that's my biggest sort of. And to follow on from that, I kind of, I was wondering, um, how has being an Asian kind of shaped your experience in the music world? And also how has being a woman yeah. shaped your experience into the music world? Like, did you face any kind of like discrimination? Did mm. you use that to kind of leverage your, um, leverage your career or like how, how did it yeah. change? <laughs> well, I'm sure you've had similar experiences as well, but I mean, I still get it on a weekly basis. I'm dickhead saying me like it the fried rice. I'm like, of course I like the fried rice. It's yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Alcohol content gave this to you. Of course it's delicious. Yeah. 
Of course I like it. Who doesn't like fried rice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, coming back to the question, um, as an Asian woman, as a Korean woman specifically, mm-hmm. y- you don't see many Korean gothy kind of looks <laughs> at all. So I'm like... I'm the only Korean goth in the village. Mm. Oh, so alone. <laughs> and also... But did you use that to kind of, like, help you? Or at did, first, was it, it was very kind of... isolating. Mm, mm. I had nobody to go, hey, listen to this new song from Blah Blah. Yeah. Like, no one gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was either, like, hip-hop or K-pop, which mm-hmm. I, you know, like in... I love hip-hop and K-pop in small doses. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, the, like I, I see a lot of like um, Korean rappers. Mm, I don't mm-hmm. see any other genres. Yeah, yeah. That's and so, so true. I'm just like, where's the me's? Mm-hmm. Not to be selfish, but like, where's the me's that's like doing sort of dark, sad electronic yeah. music? Yeah, yeah. So when I felt when I faced the adversity, I went full pelt. Like I'm going to be even more Korean. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be even more dark. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how I. <laughs> Wow. I don't know if that's a good strategy or not, yeah, but that's yeah. that's I just that was my just knee jerk reaction. It's like, oh, you don't like this? Well, I'm gonna double it, mm. <laughs> awesome. double down. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Cool. <laughs> what about your experience as a woman, though? Did that um, like, did you face any discrimination uh, or in, anything? I've been really lucky, but you know, a lot of my female friends that make music. They've worked with dickhead producers who mm-hmm. won't give them the track properly. The sound guys. The sound, sure. yeah, the, yeah, yeah, sound guys will <laughs> rude to you consistently, talk yeah. down to you. Mm. Not all sound guys, but seriously. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, the overwhelming majority of mm-hmm. them. And, yeah. and yeah, yeah. You, 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 we always tell people telling you to smile. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. And you're like, do you tell Amanda? <laughs> yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like creepy dudes in studios, mm. you know? Oh, yeah. I missed all that. The dude I recorded with is a fucking amazing human and a complete sweetheart. And I was going through some heavy shit and he had yeah. to listen to me psycho babble at him and he was cool <laughs> with it, you know. He was really understanding. But yeah, I got really lucky with the people I work with. Okay, I yeah. mean, I work with mostly men too. And mm, they were all mm. like just complete fucking angels. Oh, so I really liked it. But like, I've heard horror stories from my friends. Like, yeah, yeah. This one guy wouldn't give her track back, this producer, unless she went to dinner with him. Oh. <sighs> I was like, dude, that's not how this works. Yeah. That's literally that's blackmailing. My, yeah, that's my song <laughs> that we worked on together. Oh my gosh. Like, you're getting paid. Like, oh, just give wow. me my fucking song. Wow. I'm professional. Mm-hmm. And to think that it still happens in still 2019 happens. as well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then Trump's pre- president yeah. said, up is down, man. Yeah. I don't even know anymore. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Political. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go into the whole Kim Jong Un thing? <laughs> oh, that guy. Like when you were faced with the whole like racial identity kind of like issue, mm. you went you went further. So you went like more Korean, mm. more um goth, and then so did that um did that have an f- effect on the kind of audience you um had as well or? Well, like, I'm your very new, so the audience yeah. right now is just, you know, my friends. It'll be us <laughs> as well, thank you yeah. very much. Then, <laughs> friends. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I would imagine with my um, listener base growing, it would be that, but the music in itself isn't really goth. When mm-hmm. you think of goth music, you think like Bauhaus or mm-hmm. um, Joy Division or, you know, just the sort of that eighties post punk sound, mm-hmm. which is I don't I do I do like electro pop, but just sad. Yeah, yeah, get <laughs> sad get pop. Job. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But my just my branding and my on stage persona is a bit you know goth because that's mm-hmm. just who I am. Like Dolly, yeah. Dolly yeah. Parton mm-hmm. said a really great thing. She said, um, "Like figure out who you are and do it on purpose." Mm-hmm. And I always like that. That's so like yeah, it's like just yeah. So I'm just amplifying that part of me a bit more yeah. for, for the stage. Yeah, yeah, and, I see. And, and for the imagery and stuff. And mm. I've got this giant Korean wig I wore in the video clip and mm. it was like five kilos. And <laughs> I had to wear that for like 18 hours or whatever oh it was. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So you've got this new solo act, like, is that called, like, a solo act? And it's called that. Yes. 
All right, cool. So that started quite recently this year. Yes. All right. Yes, I've been chipping away at the music and then I gave myself a name and then I got them produced and then I went into the studio and then recorded it and then I got the I got the mastered and then I went, okay, well, I've got to get a video clip happening and then once that happened, I um, sought after a PR company to help me release it properly and get a wider audience than I would, mm -hmm. um, which will be next to nothing. And it's been a really awesome time. Like the PR company I'm working with, Riot House, is amazing. Mm -hmm. They're really um, transparent in what they do. They're really responsive and really collaborative. And they get what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. because they're not, you know, they know that I'm not four good dudes with a guitar leaning on a wall. Mm -hmm. They know yeah. that's yeah. not what I'm going for. Like, yeah. like he, my guy just gets it. So wow. that's how it's pitched it to other people in the media. So which mm -hmm. is really nice. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It's hard. People, and same with producers. It's like, it's not dance music. It's not hip hop R&B. Mm -hmm. How do you explain it? You know, yeah. but I've worked with people that just got it by me going, you know, can you make that beat more like, not, and they're like, okay. yep, got it. Yeah. And I'm just like, yes. That's it, that's it. So I'm very lucky I've worked with these people that just, just got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and is there, is there like an overarching theme, by the way? Like, a, yeah. like why did you name it balance, by the way? Um, <laughs> like... That's actually an old like... English word where like lyrics, the lyrical content of a song and mm -hmm. the melody has equal parts importance. Mm -hmm. And yep. I'm such a lyric nerd and I think words are really powerful and really important. Yeah. And I take a lot of effort and pride in putting it together words for a song. So... All these songs are ballads, even though they're not like ballads like Celine Dion. Because, <laughs> yeah. but they're ballads in the sense that the lyrical content is as important as the music. Mm, mm, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And it just sounded... I just wanted one word. And the other thing was like, I just wanted one word that sounds cool in all caps. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue as well. <laughs> yeah, not if you don't know the visa A's. You're like... Vroom, vroom. <laughs> what is that band? <laughs> means like sadness, depression, rage, like vengeance, okay. <laughs> thirst for revenge. Oh my god! <laughs> you found my weak spot! Chubby Asian baby! <laughs> <laughs>